Were there any like negative things about working with REI that you guys kind of wanted to get away from? So there was a lot that kind of went down. Anything massive, like a corporation, you've got politics. That was creating a ton of friction. The show could quite literally not have continued the way that people had known it had we stayed. Are you and Miranda dating? Um, here's the screen. How's it going, everybody? Welcome back to Trail Tales. My name is Kyle O'Grady. I am a through hiker. I am a peak bagger. I am a huge hiking nerd. And every single week on this podcast, which is now a video podcast, by the way, I chat with other hiking nerds about their experiences on the trail. And this episode is going to be a banger, dude. And so is next week, by the way. So you got to subscribe to the YouTube and all the podcast things. But without further ado, Rainer Golden is on the show. Rainer, what's going on, man? Hey, Kyle. I'm impressed with that intro, by the way. That was smooth. Thank you. That was <laughs> way shorter than they have traditionally been, but I'm trying to trying to shorten them up for for YouTube retention reasons. You know? Yeah, I'm sure no. You understand that better than most. So. Yeah, I do. As a producer, I'm like, that intro, buttoned up, impressed. I would yeah. have had no notes. If I really wanted to go for retention, though, the first thing out of my mouth would have been, hey, Rainer, are you and Miranda dating? But we're going to get to that later. Um, <laughs> we, we got a long ways to go before we get there, actually. Uh, why don't you go ahead and introduce yourself, dude? Who is Rainer Golden? Oh, man. That's a question I struggle with every day. No. Um, <laughs> <laughs> we're going deep. This, this, this is going to be great, dude. I'm already so, I'm no. already so stoked on this. <laughs> uh, yeah, I'm Rainer. I am the uh, co-creator of um, Miranda Goes Outside Once... Miranda in the wild. Uh, I've been in, gosh, YouTube since 2015. Um, and I've been in the industry of making video since, I'm looking off here because I'm trying to remember because it's been a while, uh, since basically like 2013 or 2014. Um, from the Seattle area, but I lived in Hollywood for a long time. Uh, I did the Hollywood grind for a long time. Uh, Came out of that into like the social media world at BuzzFeed and then leveraged that into uh, coming back home to REI. Worked there for a while, created the Miranda in the Wild show with Miranda. And uh, yeah, just earlier this year, we took it independent. And uh, now where Miranda goes outside, um, that is the shortest possible yeah. version of that story. But yeah. Uh, yeah, and here we are now almost at the end of this first year of uh, my first ever period of my career running a fully independent YouTube channel where my actual, like, <laughs> how much money I actually have is dependent on the yeah. channel's, like, ad sets and sponsor revenue. So it's been, I can't believe it's almost been already a year, but it's, yeah, here we are. Yeah, and you guys are hanging in there for sure. Uh, you're you're in it, man. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I'm almost, uh, I'm almost, I'm, or actually at this point, I guess I'm more than a year into me doing the same thing. Well, being fully dependent, you know, as a full-time job and everything. Wait, is that um, right? Really? Just a year for you? Well, I guess technically it was it, it was April of 2022 that I like quit my day job and then I went and hiked the most of the PCT. But, right. but during the PCT and for many months after that, I really wasn't making much money. So I guess technically I was full time YouTube, but while I was on the PCT, at least it doesn't it doesn't feel like I was because it. It felt like I was a full-time through hiker to be honest. Yeah. I was just pointing my camera at my face every now and again and saying some bullshit. So yeah. I don't know. Um, but what what you might have already said this, so I apologize. Do you consider yourself what producer, director, what, like yeah, what title? Kind of all of it. I mean, you know, if you really wanted to like get into the actual, I, I actually struggled with this. This is a funny question because I actually struggled <laughs> with this when we founded the company. I was like, what do I call myself? I've always just been producer. That's what I think of myself as. That's what I thought of myself as since I became a producer. When I started in Hollywood, all I wanted to be was a producer. And so that's what I am. And that's what I've been. But technically, I guess I'm the CEO and founder of, oh. of the channel. That sounds fancy. Co CEO. I don't know. The CEO. The CEO of a channel you don't even appear on. That's, that's interesting. <laughs> it feels extra to say that. I would say yeah. that I am like the... Swiss Army knife, kind of. I direct every episode, uh, post supervise, kind of guide it all the way to its publish. And um, you know, this year, what's new for me is I'm now like videographer, <laughs> which is like brand new. That was like that has been. We can get into this, but that was like 
the moment, like the knot in my stomach terror at the beginning of this year was. I so you weren't camera. doing video work when you were still with REI? No, I come from a. I, I was I was behind the camera. I told the videographers. I shouldn't say I told them what to do, but I made sure that they did what I thought the story needed. Like I was there to kind of cover the story. And I don't want people to think when I say story, it's like we're making it up. We never made anything up. It was just making sure that what was happening made sense to people. I mean, you know this as a video creator. It's like you can't yeah. just go out there and film reality and have it be interesting to anyone other than maybe your parents. <laughs> you know? <laughs> On a third hike, you can. I'll say that. Yeah, well, that, is, that is interesting. That's not that's, regular life, though. <laughs> yeah, that, yeah, that's very much a very different version of life. Yeah. yeah, man. Yeah. Um, okay, so I guess a question I want to start with here, and and by the way, everybody, I put a poll out on my Instagram as I often do before these episodes to try to get some questions from people, and Miranda reposted it, and so I got some hilarious questions, and we're gonna get into some of those Instagram <laughs> questions too. I'm so excited. Um, actually, you know what? Why don't we Why don't we do that right now? Yeah, hit me um, with one. This first one says, "How does?" he referring to you managed to manage being in the presence of greatness all the time actually 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 that was from miranda herself actually maybe we shouldn't do that of course that was i was about to say no one asked that no one um (laughs) i could have told you that was miranda (laughs) yeah okay let's do this next one um how did he get so lucky with the best co-worker in the world uh you know what that was miranda oh my god that was miranda too um, sorry, sorry. I should have done more research. Let me, let's do another one. Um, no more Miranda questions. How does he pronounce the word pamphlet? Oh, for God's sake. Oh, actually, I think that was Miranda too. Sorry, Miranda asked but, every question, didn't she? No, <laughs> she did ask those three though. I actually am curious about this pamphlet thing because there was at least three other people that asked the same question about pamphlet is this an is this an inside joke on your channel i'm not a i'm not okay. aware of like what's the deal with this here's what happened so we kind of the last some of the last kind of big project we did with rei with the home when the show was still ran in the wild we were still ran in the wild channel was we did this big road trip across the country um and in the first episode we're driving from seattle down to the bay area in california so you know day and a half of driving and part of that is the driving through the Redwoods. And we're there, and they have these, and I'm going to say it the way I've always said it, and everyone can roast me in the comments. <laughs> they had these pamphlets that showed you. <laughs> like, what did Wait, you say want? it again? Say it again. Pamphlets. Like, I, Pam- to, me, pamphlets? to me, it was a silent H. It's always been like a silent H. <laughs> I know, here's the thing. I know I'm wrong. I know I'm wrong now. I didn't know where I was wrong then. And I think, I like... You know, it's lucky I'm not easily embarrassed because I, like, absolutely roasted Miranda <laughs> for her pronunciation of it, which is the correct pronunciation. Ooh, shit. And I and, and it, like, went in the video, and I I was like, this video's going to come out, and here I am, like... Because Miranda and I have a lot of things that we, like, kind of banter and argue about in a playful way. And I was like, here's another one, and I, like... Like, I'm, I, think, I think this is kind of borne out. I kind of tend to win those arguments. Like, I tend to be <laughs> right. And this time... According, according to you, According anyways. to me. I, I think so, though. I think that is... Miranda can disagree all she wants, but I think that I'm mostly the one who wins these arguments. But this time, I, I totally thought I had a slam dunk. And I was like, she says pamphlet. I'm like, what did you just say? And, <laughs> and I like, roast her for that pronunciation. And comments start, we post the video, comments start coming in. Like, come, at, coming at me. Like, what is this, Rainer? What are you talking about? I'm Googling it on my phone. I'm like watching the comments come in. I'm watching the video views tick up. And the comments are coming in hot with my, like, I, no one comments about me on these videos. Like, a few people might, you know? And like, here it comes and, yeah. I, uh, I'm like Googling the pronunciation. I like check one source, I'm wrong. I check another source, I'm wrong. I'm like, is there a world <laughs> in which this is the pronunciation? It, there isn't. Um, that being said, there are some people typically from the South who do say it that way. Oh, okay. And my dad is from Georgia and Alabama, kind of uh, grew up both places. And so I'm, but I asked him, like, do you say it that way? He doesn't. But I picked this up somewhere. So I don't know, but it's like I'm 35 now and it's not doing anyone any harm. So I'm not changing. <laughs> <laughs> no, dude, just run with it. And, and speaking yeah. of, of pronunciation and the South, so you know that trail that runs from Georgia to Maine, the AT? How would you pronounce the name of it, the full name of that trail? 
if I am thinking ahead to what someone might say, I would try to get ahead of it and say Appalachian, right? But I don't <laughs> natively say it that way. I say Appalachian. Dude, this is, <laughs> oh my, this, this gets me going. I have probably thousands of comments on my channel at this point of people getting mad at me for saying Appalachian instead of Appalachian. Really? They're like, if you say it, Wrong. I'm gonna throw an apple at you. Like, get it? Oh, it it's yeah. it's ridiculous. I think Miranda and I talked about this a little bit on our episode too. Um, I won't even get into it. That's, Do they come after uh, Taylor, the New Hampshire hiker, over this as well? Because she says it that way too. I'm sure they do. Yeah, I'm sure they do. Anyone from the north, basically, or or not from the south, I should say, says it. Says Appalachian, and people from the south don't understand. It's not that we're saying it wrong. We just, and you're not saying it wrong either. It's just a different pronunciation totally. based on your location. And it, it, and it bugs me to no end. Oh my God. Anyways. <laughs> I mean, people say, well, I'm like, you know, here in the Pacific Northwest, we've got a lot of crazy name places, you know, like, I mean, like right here, we're in Leavenworth. People say Leavenworth all the time. Ooh, you know, it's like, I, I feel like that's like something that's okay, that's not the right pronunciation. I think that probably people would argue who say Appalachian, like you're, you are objectively saying this wrong, but I don't mm. know. I feel, I feel like I agree with you. I feel like maybe, you know, maybe I'll get roasted in the comments for this too, but yeah. I, I feel like it's such a regional thing. People say Oregon sometimes. People say Washington Ooh. about Washington. You know, it's like, I feel like we should just all be kind to each other. <laughs> yeah, I agree. I agree. <laughs> yeah. um, all right, dude. So I want to talk more about the channel and some of the behind the scenes stuff, both about the channel and about Miranda, but... Um, I think we should should start by just uh, learning more about your backpacking experience yeah. and your outdoor experience. So my understanding, talking to you before this, is that you had not really backpacked before you started working on Miranda <laughs> in the wild. Not in the sense of like carrying everything into the woods or the mountains or wherever you might be. And Interesting. Everything's with you. All your food, your tent, whatever your shelter might be. All of that. I had never done that one time before I wow. was hired by REI. <laughs> <laughs> so, so, but you weren't, so that very first time where you, you were producing, but where you weren't filming yet at that point? Oh, wait, when? Oh, uh, your very first backpacking trip. Yeah, oh yeah. Some of the back, the first ever like proper backpacking trip, which is in, on video in the, I tried, like, can you go backpacking for $200 video, which is on the REI YouTube channel. That was it. I mean, like, I literally went into the REI Media Studio where they had, like, all of these, um, like, I, ca I call them prop pieces of gear, but they're real pieces of gear, you know? And I like, just found yeah. stuff in my size and just, like, loaded, used all of that. I used, like, Loa Renegade boots. I used, like, a Gregory Ultralight backpack. I had no idea what Ultralight backpacking was. <laughs> I had never heard of such a thing. I, I, uh, and I didn't know that, like, that weight capacity, the weight capacity on it was, like, under 30 pounds, and I, like, put, like, an REI half dome tent in it. <laughs> 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 and so that's all. I mean, my feet were hurting, and the backpack was super uncomfortable. But, I mean, I, I loved it. It was a pretty flat trail. But, yeah, that is on, that is my first time carrying a tent and my food and filtering water, and um, yeah, that, that was that is my first like proper backpacking trip. Like we Damn, talked dude. about, I had done I backpacked around the world after college for over a year. So I I carried a backpack on my back with all my things from cities from all the way from Australia across Asia and the Middle East uh, to Eastern Europe to Europe back to America. Um, Damn. So I was familiar with carrying all of my stuff, and I, I and I'd done backpacking like through hikes, but they were to like they had, like for example in Nepal you go to like these things they call tea houses, and they have food, they got breakfast, lunch, dinner, and they got you know you sleep and it's like a hotel. And then you know I did uh, some through hikes in China, but again it was the same deal. So it's like I didn't have to and then the water this is before water filter like I came back from that trip and there was like Sawyer water filters and Katadin water filters. And I was like, did those exist when I did that? Cause I, I was like <laughs> popping iodine tabs into yeah. jeans and it tastes like, you know, wanting to like die because it tastes so bad. Yeah. And, uh, but yeah, that was like, that was what you did. That, that was kind of the only, so I kind of, it wasn't like a new thing for my body. It wasn't like, what are you doing to us right now? But, right. uh, it was definitely like a new, I definitely was freezing cold cause I didn't know what our value was. <laughs> and 
Yeah. I didn't know how to. <laughs> but you, but you, had, you had hiked before, certainly, then. Oh, even if you hadn't carried, like, all of the essentials on your back. So you definitely had, like, you know, that base of hiking experience. Um, but it does sound like, you know, a lot of your backpacking, will say, recently, over the last number of years, or all of it, maybe, has revolved around the channel. Is that correct? Yeah. I mean, I, 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 I credit Miranda, you know, with teaching me everything I know. Yeah, you know, and it was awesome. a cool marriage that way for the show because it was like, wait, you're married? Did we just get to the bottom of it. No, I'm, I'm just kidding. kidding. <laughs> you want to go viral? No, no. <laughs> this is Sorry, like the number one question. Test no, yeah, yeah. <laughs> cool, like, like working relationship because it was like I came back from the Hollywood thing. I was all about like that, and Miranda had like all the knowledge, and and you know, I so it was like perfect in that way because she like yeah she everything that I like. I, we tend to like my gear mirrors hers half the time, if not all. The, I mean, now I say half the time because I've kind of gone my. It's been years now, and I've learned everything, and I've got my own stuff that I use. It's different from hers, but like, um, no, like early on, it was like I just did whatever she did, whatever the yeah. show was. You know, I didn't necessarily know, you know, the, her recommendations in the video. Like, I couldn't watch a video going, "Is this the most?" Like, I wasn't looking at it for like, "Is this the most cutting edge backpacking advice?" You know, I was looking at it as, is this inter is this helping? Is this interesting? Is this something that communicates to me? Because I was kind of a rank beginner in the sense of like, well, I guess in the sense of like that the kind of backpacking that the show is about, I was like, I was pretty new to that. Yeah. As someone who hiked, as someone who like, you know, I, I used like, I, I had to borrow boots for that first trip. I said I had boots, but they'd blown the sole out in Nepal. So I wasn't like unfamiliar with this stuff, but like, you know, it was, it was like, I'd never heard of like Nemo before, you know, I, yeah, you know, like I never, <laughs> I didn't know any of this stuff. You know? <laughs> yeah. Interesting, man. Have you, have you gone backpacking since starting the channel without filming, without content? Have you just done it just for the sake of backpacking? Because I've talked to a number of, uh, you know, backpacking YouTubers on the show, obviously. And a surprising amount of them have never gone backpacking without filming it. Interesting. That's, that's, I, it's actually kind of validating to hear that. I would say most of the backpacking trips I've been on in the last, what, four or five years have been filmed. Um, I would say about 90%. Um, I will go backpacking by myself with my dog, Tucker. Um, oh, nice. Yeah, when I have an opportunity. I mean, like, and you know, as you know, YouTube is like, I don't know how many hours a week. Is there even a quantifiable number? You know, it's like a hundred, you know? I mean, is there a day off? You know, I, I, not in, if you're looking into your YouTube studio, you know, is there, I mean, so the amount of times that I've actually had time to go off and just like do my own thing, not that much. You know, I, Miranda and I both spend all day, every day in some way thinking about the channel, in some way yeah. thinking about, but like, you know, usually around this time of year, like, coming into the fall, like end of the fall, early winter, you know, is kind of when things slow down a little bit, you got to be a bit more methodical. And that's usually when I'll steal away and I'll do some trips on my own. I actually did a big backpacking trip with my friends this year in a oh, seven nice. lakes space in Olympic national park. Uh, and that was like the first time I've been not solo. It sounds like you've actually done a, a decent amount then, you know, beyond just filming for the channels. So that's, that's cool to hear. It, it, it doesn't, it sounds like, you know, you discovered backpacking through your work, obviously, but then it's kind of taken on a little bit of a life of its own, you know, outside of work as well. So I'm I'm glad to hear that because, yeah, like I said, a lot of backpacking YouTubers, not all of them, certainly, but um, a lot of them, they film everything. And, like, it's almost like, I mean, it's not that they don't love doing it, obviously, and it's not that they don't love backpacking, but it is part of their work, you know? And so it's cool to hear that you do it a little bit um, outside as well. I mean, I love it. I mean, I have a really overactive mind. You know, I, I, I will overthink about every, just about everything. You know, like, I, <laughs> boom, thoughts start going. There's no stopping the fountain of, you know, and it can, you know, it's like it just, and I, and I don't mind it. I like that I can just kind of, my mind just goes, like, super fast. But I, it gets exhausting just to kind of honestly be in my own head sometimes. And I don't say that yeah, as, like, man. some sort of labor genius. I don't think that is all at, <laughs> at all. I, <laughs> I I just think of it as just sometimes it's just, like, I can, you know, it's almost like thinking about too many, something from every angle too often. And 
something about that happens when you're out in nature and your mind slows down and everything slows down, especially if you're on a multi-night trip where like you get in the rhythm yeah. of a different thing. I can be like anyone addicted to my phone. I can be addicted to media. I can think of downtime as like watching Netflix or something. And to, I don't know, there's something to be able to be just there and it's quiet and it's peaceful. I, I it's like, especially like post pandemic, all the kind of stress that came with that, like, I've just been like, I've, I've, I've like needed it more even than it's been something I do as, as like fun. It's like, no, this is something that I have to have or else I'm going to burn out because I'm just going to think about, I just can't stop those thoughts and the things that stress you out. So yeah, dude, I'm, I'm like that too, man, for sure. I, I think that's a trait of YouTubers to be honest. Like, dude, I've had not to get too personal on here, but I've had a number of nights over the past few weeks where I just have not been able to fall asleep because like I've, I cannot stop thinking about this podcast and ways to make it better, especially because I'm doing this video thing now, which everyone should go subscribe to the trail tales, YouTube, if you're listening on Spotify still or whatever. Um, yeah. Anyways, uh, I, I feel you there for sure. You know how it is. I mean, it's yeah. What you, what you describe, I actually don't know how many people out there understand this about like, you know, cause it's like, it's not that, like I talk to you now and you're the same guy seeing the videos, you know, it's like, you're totally an authentic person. And that's awesome. I mean, to be fair, we are on video right now. <laughs> you're right. right. So I don't know you at all. No, I try to be the same. Um, if you, if you had gone to trail days, then you could have really gotten to know me. I like, know I missed it. Oh my gosh. I was like stuck at, well, this, this actually, it's a great example. Cause this is like right to the point of what we're talking about. It's like, I was going to go down to trail days with Miranda and PCT trail days. And it's like, you know, it's only four hours from my house in Seattle. You know, I could have just easily driven down there, but we had an edit that needed to be covered. And, you know, someone's got to do that work. Um, and, you know, these things don't just come together. You know, some people do think that they come together, you hit, you hit record on the camera, and then everything just falls into place. But <laughs> according to many commenters, YouTube is not a real job. But <laughs> I don't know what, uh, yeah, that's been the last, yeah. I mean, it's, I didn't think it was going to be a real job when YouTube, started i was in high school i remember watching youtube the first ever youtube video i remember that i was 16 oh, years old really 16 nice. years old yeah and i and i the fact that this has been my job now for a decade is uh yeah man is uh crazy to think about and and so miranda's it's so it's so hard for me because like i want to say you know when we're referring to the older things i want to say miranda in the wild but then now it's miranda goes outside and um so i'm just gonna say but then i was gonna say miranda's channel but then Obviously, it's not just Miranda's channel because I'm talking to you about it right now. But just for the lack of a better term, um, Miranda's channel started, you know, under REI. And during Miranda and I's my, my last episode, we uh, we talked all about kind of like the history there and leaving REI. And so we won't go like too far into the history um, but I am curious, and this might be a question you might not want to answer, so you don't have to answer it, but I, I had to ask, um, obviously you guys left REI. Why did you leave? Why did you go independent with the channel? And what, were there any like negative things about working with REI that you guys kind of wanted to get away from? I mean, the, the, there's a lot that went into it. You know, and I wish that there was something really incendiary here that I could give you. I know, dude. Just think of the just think of the thumbnail capabilities there, like or possibilities, like that'd be perfect. So, I, like, I wish I could give you kind of something that was like incendiary, like there was an event that happened and everything turned sour, but that didn't happen. And and and, and like, let me give actually all the love in the world here to REI because REI is a retailer and that is their business, right? And when I was hired at REI, there was this big dream about like a broader kind of media presence. And I, and I can't speak to whether or not that is still a dream there at all. I mean, we had this global event, which I don't necessarily need to talk too much about, that kind of got in the way of a lot of stuff, right? And so, you know, Miranda in the Wild kind of emerging during the pandemic, which it did. I mean, it started during that. I mean, we were, Miranda and I are sitting in the set of Miranda in the Wild, the first iteration of the set at the REI Media Studio in Kent, Washington. As we are like, our manager comes rushing in and says, go home. Like everyone's going home right right now. And we never ended up 
all of us on the team at REI who kind of were in the media studio ended up in a room together at the same time, literally ever again. Wow. Um, so there was a lot that kind of went down. But like in terms of like an event that occurred and like what would have like driven us, drove, what would have drove us to leave, there wasn't something like that. And I will give the credit to REI to say, you know, you're a retailer and they gave Miranda and I um, full license to do, and I, mean, and I mean this when I say this, quite literally whatever we wanted. I, I, I mean, the, whenever a video went out, and Miranda in the Wild video went out on an REI YouTube channel, typically there were three people who had seen that video. Me, Miranda, and the editor. That's wow. it. I mean, no legal team was coming in. No marketing team was coming in being like, we got to flog this product. I mean, and I, I still am very surprised that that was the reality. Like, yeah, I, me that too. That is not typical of a, of a company of REI's size. And REI is like a cruise ship, you know? They're a big boat. They're huge. They turn slow. They're a massive organization. They got thousands of employees, tens of thousands of employees, if you count all the green vests in the stores, which you should. And, and it's like to kind of trust this really forward customer-facing program on video on their YouTube channel to, to me and Miranda was... Um, was a that's a big deal, you yeah. Know? And uh, I I don't think that would happen in a lot of places. And I think it really speaks to the courage of the people involved. I want to shout out Alyssa Hudson actually, who was kind of probably who was our manager. And a lot of the reason why that was the case is probably because of her. But the um, that being said, like anything massive, like a corporation, you've got politics and you've got things and you got and that is not a statement about REI unique to any organization. You sure. Know, that is definitely. that is a statement about organizations as a whole. You know. Oh yeah. And uh, you know, there's no politics now with Miranda goes outside because there's two people, three people. <laughs> you know, it's like, you know, so it's like, but when you got thousands of people, you know, you got to make a lot of people happy. You got to think about a lot. And um, essentially, what happened was that there was a pace that we want to move that just could not be moved at. And that was creating a ton of friction, not because people were Luddite, not because people were not believing in what we were doing, but simply because be, there, the, an organization of that size can't just hand the reins to these two people. You yeah. know? You've got a whole brand to think about, a whole, you know, thousands of employees to think about. My camera just shut off again. Sorry, um, Rainer's camera is having some problems uh he was very gracious and he actually is recording this on his own camera and microphone in order to have the best quality which i really appreciate but his camera overheated so we're gonna he's gonna be on the the webcam it's a bummer it, it cut out there because dude you were going off man that was that was perfect yeah, that was... i mean I, I have a lot of like feelings about the whole rei experience because i'm so grateful for what they allowed us to do you know and um, yeah, I mean, like you could, I think it probably to the outside world, you'd go, why in the heck, knowing what also what you know about YouTube and how difficult it can be to kind of stay relevant, like why would you walk away from like salary, benefits, who cares if a video tanks in terms of whether or not that affects your livelihood? You know, why would you walk away from any of that? And, and there's, you know, the kind of the thing that we want, like, and I say we because it's like Marianne and I both feel this way. You want people to know is that like it didn't come because of anything that was bad blood between us and the organization, but the show could quite literally not have continued um, the way that people had known it had we stayed. And um, REI was in their extreme graciousness, the people who literally told us that and said, didn't tell us what to do, but, and, and when I say us, it was more like Miranda, because I was um, contracted to, I was like full-time contractor on the show. Okay. Miranda was full-time employee. So she was the one more kind of in the hierarchy, closer to the organization. And so what they said to her basically was like, we're not telling you what to do, but, you know, they're kind of, there was, I think there was kind of like a nudge, like, hey, like if you really want this to be all you, you'd like it to be. Um, I, we don't know if it can happen here. And I, I, I think that I can sit here and I can dream about all the ways in which that didn't necessarily need to be true, but I appreciate that that was 
the perspective and I give them all the credit in the world that they gave her and I the ability to create exactly what we wanted to create. I mean, I, and I, and like, there was sometimes you would see comments that were like, oh, this is just a marketing thing for REI products. And it was like, it couldn't be further from the truth. In fact, if we had even, we didn't, but if we, we were even had the, we had, we were allowed to even negatively review REI products. Really? Like, yeah, if we'd done that, they would not have stopped us from putting that video out. Wow, that's pretty badass. Yeah. And so they were like, no, like, if you, if you how, like, you know, we were like, we, 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 we want to have an honest and a an, an perspective that has integrity behind it. And we want to be, you know, this is how we, we want to put something out in the world that is how we feel. And I, and mostly it's Miranda. I mean, I'm a facilitator. I'm like the person who puts their hands up so you can, you know, climb up. And that's what I do, mm-hmm. you know, but like, it's, it, it's like, you know, it's creating something, creating something real. And, and that was understood, you know, and as the organization needed to move more towards things that had kind of integrated with campaign and integrated with the more kind of retail goals of the company uh, and more aligned closely with that. I know it's tough doing business, especially in retail. And so it's just, you're always having to worry about traffic to a website or literal traffic into a store. And that's a lot to get galvanized people to do. Yeah, um, man. And so, no, you know, having to align a video um, program more closely with what kind of creates that, I understand. You know, and, and it's like, but it's also not what a YouTube channel is about. And a YouTube channel isn't there to sell things necessarily. And not at least in what we wanted to do. You know, so yeah. even now it's like, you know, you know, we, we work with sponsors and stuff like that, but they're only sponsors that we authentically, you know, like we just, you know, like everything that comes on the channel is something that's been used and, and authentically endorsed. And that is true going back to the very beginning of the show, even though yeah. we were with this major American uh, outdoor brand, you know, it's yeah. like we were not their voice necessarily, but we were a piece of it. You know, does that make any, does that make sense? It's a tough thing to describe. Yeah. You know, no, I, I think you I think you described it very well and it, it lines up a lot with or pretty much exactly with what Miranda said on our episode as well. How so since you guys have left REI and have gone independent, how has it been so far? Like how was that transition? Uh, and I mean, I'm assuming you're not looking back, right? Oh no. I mean like love being independent. I'll say that. Like absolutely adore it. You know, is there new stress, different kinds of stress, and the kind of stress that can, like, <laughs> like you described earlier, keep you up at night in a way that's, yeah. like, a new way? Oh, my gosh, 100%. I mean, like, I'll, I'll just drop you right in. Like, we decisions made to leave. You know, there's legal discussions about what IP belongs to who, you know, and that kind of stuff. And that went very well, went very, very well. And, you know, we were happy with where we were. And all of a sudden, it's like, there you are. And we've had this incredible team that has helped create the show. And I'll put, I'll put you in my just personal... I, I use a lot of we language because it feels like everything Miranda and I do is, like, together. But I'm a, I come from a background of, like, a, like a producer. Like, I come from produ- production management. You know, I, 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 I hire the people to do the skill stuff camera edit you know um i don't know how to do this stuff i've been around it for over a decade i know the base the kind of ideas about how to light how to what how to use a camera dslr camera you know but these are all these things that like i have no understanding of like getting a camera in my hands i'm like this is not my job this has not been my job on this show and here we are and like now that's that's the case so Mm-hmm. I was like, and I hadn't been a beginner at something in this field in a very long time. Like that was, if I had to boil it down to one thing, it was probably that. It was that I had yeah. been doing this job, especially on YouTube for so long. Like I'd come from BuzzFeed. I'd been managing and producing YouTube videos there. You know, I was intimately familiar with how to set up a YouTube production operation. Um, and even outside of YouTube, I mean, just in grander video, you, you can make whatever you want to make a movie, you want to make a TV show. Like I can resource you for that and I can run your film set and I can do all that stuff. That's all in my bones. I could do that without really any preparation. 
I would, 10,000 hours I've done that, you know? Here I am now worrying about lighting yeah. <laughs> that I'm used to being like gaffers are doing that, electricians are handling that, you got cam ops, you know? And like here it's now all on my shoulders and I'm a newbie all over again. Yeah, man. Not easy, I can imagine. Yeah, it's not easy to be a newbie, especially when you know what it's supposed to look like. Like, there's a wonderful ignorance sometimes when you start a YouTube channel, but you're like, I don't know about audio, I don't know about camera, but I'm just going to say what I want to say, and I'm going to put it on YouTube, you know? And there's, <laughs> like, this kind of beauty to that. And that's one of the things that's beautiful about YouTube, you know? And, like, is that people who don't... You know, you couldn't put that on TV, but there's an authenticity and a realness to it here on YouTube where it's someone who has no camera skills, doesn't matter. You can just point a camera at your face and hike 2,000 miles and people want to hear it. That's a cool thing. You get to, and it's a way that like, and a good TV could never do it because there's no way TV would and it could only be on YouTube, really. And yeah. and like, and, and, and there's something kind of wonderful about being new to everything. But being, but being like now, I've, I've been on film sets for videos that were going to be on YouTube that had 110 person crews, uh, stunt people, cam camera teams that were doing like car stunts and shutting down mm. traffic lights in Hollywood so that we could drive cars through without having to stop because the shot needed us to like, you know, like that was the background I come from. And now here I am holding the camera and I know what this is supposed to be like. And I, I'm like, I'm going to mess this up because it's, uh, and, uh, so I definitely live with like a good amount of terror. <laughs> yeah, but you guys are, dude, you guys are, you guys are clear. I figure I was going to say figuring it out, but that, I feel like that doesn't even do it justice. Like you guys are killing it. So, um, it's, it's going to be good, dude. Um, let's talk about Miranda. Okay. Yeah. All right. So I wanted to get the inside scoop on Miranda a little bit. I know people listening, fans of the channel are, are going to want to know. So we're, we're going to do that. First of all, so my understanding is that you guys are, roommates is that correct yes how, what is it like and, and how do you balance working with living with and also just being friends with miranda the same person that's three different things that could affect a you know a personal relationship with somebody that seems crazy to me i was going to ask about this and then i also got a number of questions on instagram about this as well what you were saying was like it seems crazy to me too like even when you hear you, when you like and, and like the way you said it like that it's like i've never even really thought about it yeah man <laughs> you know it's like it yeah, is that, crazy that's that's nuts i i am also like i won't I, i'm probably not necessarily the easiest person to live with because oh. you, you know like because i'm like i can is be, miranda uh I guess, yeah, yes and no, in the sense that, like, I can be a little bit more of a slob, you know? Like, but I'm also, like, I know it. I, I, I'm neat, and then I get obsessed with something, and then everything, I get nutty professor, and everything goes to hell, and the house, <laughs> the dishes fill the sink, and that really bothers her. But, uh, and it would bother anyone, because it's not fair. Like, you gotta, like, take care of your space when you share it. But, uh, <laughs> but I don't know, it's just... I'm getting way ahead of myself here because there's so much. <laughs> it's, a, it's a tough question for sure. There's a lot there. The cool thing about Miranda and I is that sometimes you just meet someone and you just go, this is me. In a, like, we, you just understand, like we have the same brain, right? Like even though we come from vastly different experiences, I'm from the upper left corner of the United States. You know, she's from like Washington DC area. You know, like we're from the, I just hit the window over here. Uh, we're, we're, we're from, she's from the DC area. We're from the opposite coasts of the US. So it doesn't really make any sense, but you know, Miranda, one of the things that's great about her is she is willing to risk everything in pursuit of something she believes in. And so am I, right? Like, it was nutty for me to decide I wanted to go try to have a production career and not want to sacrifice any of the things I loved in Seattle, Washington, and just move my butt up from LA to do that. That was stupid. That's a stupid decision, right? <laughs> but I was like, screw it. I don't like this place. I don't want to be in LA anymore. I want to be back home in Seattle. I'm just going to do it, right? And Miranda has a similar story about, like, 
hopping in a car in New York and just being like, we're going to move to Seattle. And she's like, had no job lined up (laughs) and like literally talked her way into the media studio. I mean, like there was no, there were not, they were not hiring. They didn't have a job open. And she just kind of did that thing where like, she was like, cool, if you want to get rid of me, give me a job, (laughs) you know? (laughs) And it's like, and I think because we both share that willingness to kind of blow up our whole lives, anytime we feel like it's necessary to follow something we believe in, that overrides everything, right? Like there is nothing now that could be little petty stuff that could get in the way because the broad philosophy on life in general and how life is approached just in the broadest strokes is identical. And then the little tweaky stuff here and there, who cares? You know, you argue about it day to day. The other thing I will say is that we can get really upset with each other and it doesn't matter at all in the grand scheme. Like, she can say whatever the heck she wants to me. I can say whatever the heck she wants. I, uh, I can say whatever the heck I want to her. And there's no broader repercussion. You know, we yeah, just man. know you got to say what you got to say. You got to do it. And that has been, by the way, for everyone listening, true from like day one. Like, I'm, I'm hired at the REI Media Studio. I'm coming in from Hollywood. The REI Media Studio is like in a parking lot in Kent, Washington, which if you're not familiar with the Washington... <laughs> There's like nothing in Kent. There's nothing there. I'm sorry to the residents of Kent. You have a, it's a great place. I apologize. No, I, it's, it's, there's not a lot going on. And, in, and it's not like you're, I was in Hollywood and now here I'm here and I'm walking in and it's this odd thing. And, and there's, and I, and like, I've seen, I'd seen Miranda in some videos cause I did my research on the Aria YouTube channel and she's in these kind of instructional videos. Mm-hmm. Um, but like, I hadn't, you know, she was there and we didn't speak to each other very much. I was kind of thinking about what am I doing? Like, you know, getting into my job. And then one day we just ended up in the kitchen, you know, and I'm like microwaving some, like a sweet potato or something, (laughs) you know, (laughs) and we just start talking and it's like, it's like, I don't know if you have people like this in your life, but like, it's like the conversation feels like it's between two people who've known each other 30 years, you know? And so like, this just was like immediate, like it was like, we are now friends, you know, and we are not just friends. We are like extraordinarily close, like bonded yeah. and friends. And I don't know if this is going to kind of bleed into your next question, but oh no, we're talking about living with Miranda. Let me get back yeah. on topic. And working with and being friends with. So like living with it, it feels extremely natural. I mean, it's like we do everything together. Our entire lives, <laughs> our destinies are intertwined. There is every day, you know, as you know, working on a YouTube channel, it's a seven days a week, 365 thing. Even if you're not filming, even if there's no video coming out, you might have a down week or something like that. You're working on thinking of new video ideas. And so we have this like co-life purpose that drives us forward all the time together. And so if she was anywhere else, but in the same house as me, it'd be really inconvenient. And I, and you know, and it, it would, it, that has existed and it was extremely inconvenient. And, Mm. and then all the other stuff, it's like, yeah, we just, it's just easy to solve. And if you get, you know, if there's something that's like, we're kind of like, oh, we got to like, you know, we're in a mood or whatever, you know, um, I can be, I'm probably the more like moody one. Uh, (laughs) like, you know, it's like, whatever, you know, that's just life day to day. You know, we're, there's, you know, we're thinking big all the time, thinking big all the time. So what happens day to day isn't important. What matters is years, you know? And, uh, so, cause it takes years to get anything worthwhile going, you yeah, know? Man. And so, and it has, I mean, that's, I feel like we're just now, I mean, this is going to sound crazy, but like with the channel Miranda goes outside, we're like, I feel, I honestly feel like we're just now getting started yeah. and, and like, and so like this, this, this four or five year lift has been going on. We've both just been grabbing on to this dream and lifting together and if someone's hand slips, whatever. As long as we're just both lifting, it all doesn't matter. Yeah. Yeah. That's a uh, that's cool to hear. I kind of I kind of have always felt the same way about my channel too. It's like Yeah. I don't know, which is probably an attitude you kind of need to have if you want to constantly been constantly be moving things forward. Um okay, so I need more drama. Um okay. <laughs> What is the most annoying thing about backpacking with Miranda <laughs> and what do you think she would say the most annoying thing about backpacking with you is? Gotcha. This is going to be, I think this is going to be an interesting answer 
because okay. I think there's a number of things that are annoying about backpacking with me. <laughs> and there is absolutely nothing. And I'm serious about this. Nothing annoying about You're backpacking. You're too kind, man. No, no, no. He, I'm he not knows kidding. Miranda's going to hear this. No, no, no. I'm, oh, you think I care what she sees? <laughs> 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 I Look, I could, I could speak about like making video. Like I'm like, Miranda is like, but like in terms of like as a backpacker, here's, here, here I'll, I'll tell you a story. So we were doing this series where we were visiting all of the best, what we thought was like, we kind of found these toilets. Yeah, that was a great toilet. idea for a video, by the way. They, they basically found like some of the coolest privies in in Washington state and like, yeah, super, super cool idea. Oh my gosh. Sure. Yeah. And it was like something we dreamed about doing for a while. And we've, we've done these two, the first two, which were just day hikes. And now we're doing, we've scored this, like, we, we, we've hit the jackpot. We've scored one of Washington State's hardest permits to get, like, the day before. I'm not kidding, the day before, which is camping at Sahale Glacier. Um, it's, like, the highest elevation campsite in North Cascades National Park that isn't a climber's bivy. Um, and it is also a climber's bivy, but it's, like, a backpacking and people who are climbing Sahale Peak. But it's, like, 7,500 feet. And you have these panoramic views and we're hiking up there and it's a hard hike, right? I mean, it's like you kind of amble along for a bit. This is very typical of hiking in Washington if you're not from here. Like you kind of start kind of in the forest and then you just climb because everything in Washington starts low and goes high, you know? And, um, and this is a big one. I mean, you got 4,000 feet of gain over the last few miles and we're coming up on that big gain, you know, and the videographer, Kyle, who's helping us film this, extraordinarily talented person great name as well oh uh, yeah that's right yeah i actually texted him thinking it was you when we were setting this up <laughs> like four times when we were setting it up because i've got that's you both funny. on my phone it's kyle <laughs> but anyway uh his uh load lifter on his pack breaks just snaps like this and he's carrying extra gear he's got camera equipment and it's like well he, and the pack's like hanging off and sideways and we're like well what the heck are we gonna do like like, I'm not the kind of producer who's going to force people through discomfort uh, arbitrarily. Like, to me, this is always about, inter like, creating things that are entertainment products for people. But, like, you know, I'm not the kind of person who wants someone just to be like, I hey, suck it up, suffer, because we have to film this video. It's like, no. It's like, I'm like, what do you need? What, oh, my gosh. Are we going to be able to do this? Because you can't ask someone to climb up this mountainside with a pack hanging off and weird and film, right? And... Miranda like goes in and she takes some paracord and she like fashions a load lifter and like attaches it to his backpack and like kind of judges it out kind of so that it <laughs> matches the other one all kind of perfect and boom and she fixes it so adequately that he doesn't even remember like later on that it was broken. Wow. You know and that is what it's like to backpack with her right. She's been around it forever. She's been around it from all sides. She's handed edited every shit from 12 plus years at REI working on the store you know, everything, it's like she's kind of had all of these different things and seen the changes in all the products. And she would never say this, by the way. She'd keep it pretty humble. But, like, you know, like, that watching that happen, that's a really normal occurrence on trail with her. So, actually, backpacking with Miranda, I feel very secure and safe because here's this, this – I know that if something happens, she's there, you know. And she has the knowledge and she knows how to do these things and she can fashion a load lifter if you need it. And if you break something, you know, she's literally, she would know how to split that. And, you know, so I actually feel very safe and secure when she's around. So in terms of annoyance, I actually feel the opposite. I feel okay. like this is nice. This is nice to have this person with this level of experience around because her experience dwarfs mine. I feel like I'm pretty competent. I feel very com comfortable going into almost all situations, but with her around, it's even more so. Yeah, that man. being said, what I think that she would say was the most annoying thing about me is that I am like, hyper fussy about <laughs> where everything goes all the time on my pack in my tent i have to have a perfect tent pitch have to <laughs> and i will not stop messing with it you know i until i have the floor of the tent has no weird creases it's just this perfectly That's taut awesome dude you know i kind of i kind of am the same way <laughs> maybe not quite as extreme but i take pride in my tent pitch for sure and i've I seen so do. many I see so many people out there, which I don't want to just be hating, but I'm going to be hating a little bit. They just set up their tent. It's not taut. It's sagging. Yeah, dude, I can't. I can't do that. I can't do it. Cannot have it. I, if I see that and I see people who like 
And I look, I, I don't want to judge anyone's experience. I think that you should do exactly what you want to do. But like sometimes I see like a tent fly like flapping because it's just not been staged judge. out. <laughs> and I'm like, and I'm that. like, I'm like, no, that's great for you. But <laughs> I could never, I would be like, I would be like looking at that and going like, I can't handle this. You know? <laughs> <laughs> what if it rains? Exactly. And like, I hate having my rain fly on my tent. Like I, I, if I, if I like, I, I will not use it if I don't, if I don't feel like I have to, but like, and, but the, uh, but that is like, and that is true of me in a lot of situations. I can be really fussy about things. I can be very, very particular. If I had to like, you know, as I've been saying this, the one thing I could say that might be annoying about hiking with Miranda that I'm realizing now is how like, huh, <laughs> extraordinarily much, how, how, hmm. How much she hates going up. She complain a lot? If we're going up, if it's the switchbacks, you're you're not going to hear the end of it. You know, it is, she's going to be like, and it's like, you know, she's got her own coping mechanism for it, but she's going to be like literally asking the mountain to please stop, be so up, you know? (laughs) (laughs) And so, and that I'm like, and to me, I'm like, no, this is, this is the stuff, right? This is where the sweat happens. This is where, you know, this is where we earn camp. You know, and she's like, why do we have to earn camp? Why, why can't camp just be on a straight plane four miles that way? <laughs> you know, and I'm like, because, you know, it's cooler when it's 20 miles away and 6,000 feet of gain, you know, <laughs> you know, and so that is, that is probably our biggest difference on trail where it's like, eh, this is the trail. This is up, you know, and she's like, you know, it's not that she's like has any problem going up, but yeah, she doesn't like going up. Yeah. Hey, we've all got our we've all got our preferences. There's a lot of people out there. I guess maybe you're one of these people. It sounds like that prefer the up, but I, that's a little psycho to me. I don't know. I, I feel like I'm a nice. I'm in the middle. I don't want it to be too steep up. I don't want it to be too steep down. If it's a nice gentle grade, and yeah. the weather isn't too hot, I can pretty much deal with either one. But I don't know. Mm. Yeah, I think that I do until I don't. <laughs> I, if that is that makes any sense at all yeah like it can get a little old after a while yeah but i definitely like have that i mean i don't want to like necessarily gender it but it feels like a kind of more generally masculine sense of like this is validating me i have to like <laughs> this i have to like it that it hurts you know yeah. <laughs> but it sounds like maybe deep down you don't actually like it no i mean yeah and, th- and then it gets to the point where you're like okay i need this to end now <laughs> yeah and uh yeah, I definitely like. Usually, what happens is I'll hit it up and I'll like attack it, and I, and I'm getting older, you know. So like, I'm that there's a war of attrition being fought between me and my stamina, you know, kind of <laughs> that's more aggressive every year, you know. And it's like, and so like, you know, and so I like wear I like wear myself out, Damn. and then like be like halfway up, and I could have just taken it at a slow pace. And yeah, then, you gotta you gotta pace yourself for sure. Yeah, yeah. I I, I don't mind the uphills except. In two scenarios, one of them I just mentioned, when it's really hot out, I don't like it. Or at the end of a day. If I'm hiking uphill for the last like two, three miles of the day and that's where camp is, which on the PCT that would happen all the time. On the AT, not nearly as often, but still it does happen sometimes. That's what I don't like. I, I don't I don't like it's like <sighs> I just want a nice cruisy last couple miles before camp, but is that what west, it's like? it seems like that's not that's not always the case. <laughs> what is the vibe like between the two trails? I don't know if you want, I know I'm trying to turn this around, but I've like, Oh no, we can, we can talk about that. Yeah. Cause I've like, you know, I've followed your channel for years. I mean, long time now, years and years, probably since like 2019 or 2020. Wow. Damn. You know, and like I've been subscribed since then. And Hell yeah, I, man, that's, that's the, basically the beginning That's yeah cool and i remember you know seeing you know when i was like hired at rei i wanted to like get really in with the niche and like you were one of the channels you know amongst the others that was like felt really prominent to me and i was like okay this is a voice and you had a very unique way of like branding your voice as well which is <laughs> it's a very yeah uh politically correct way of saying i had a douchey style that people liked. <laughs> well yeah you That's definitely had like it. you definitely caught your eye you're like you're frat, you frat boy style is yeah. how it's been described in <laughs> yeah, the comments it definitely hits you you're like you're dumb if you make these mistakes and i was like okay am i you know <laughs> but, <It worked>. like, <laughs> but i i i i, I totally got it. i was like okay you know this is interesting this is a very this is an interesting contrast is some of the stuff you see out here you know you got like your dan becker and your darwin and your dixie and you know and and uh 
and you were like amongst that. And you know, and I, I, I you know, in discussions actually at REI early on about like what we should approach the YouTube channel as before the kind of Miranda show became a reality, you were like mentioned. Wow. At REI. So let that kind of like <laughs> massage your ego a bit that you made an impact. So we're like, okay, do we want to go the your mom jokes and dick jokes route or do we want to, you know? <laughs> no, actually, it was, that. it was the opposite. You we were spoken of with praise from some of the people there. They were like, <laughs> this guy's got a cool, very editorial perspective wow. that we would like to have here at this company. <laughs> Just maybe a little cleaner. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Without, Understandably so. Yeah, Understandably a little more so. family friendly. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but. Uh, I, I completely lost track, but I, I was curious because I followed your like PCT through hike and like you know you're coming. Um, I followed up more closely to the, than the AT because this is kind of my side of the country. Yeah, man, my side of the country. I own it. Uh, this is where I, live. I was most curious to see what would happen. You know, Makes when sense. you got it's your home. Yeah, when you got to Washington, I lived in California, spent a lot of time in Oregon, and you know here I'm in Washington. So I was curious to be like, oh, Washington, you get to Washington. This is kind of the world I know the best. So. Like, what's that going to be like? And I was such a so bummed out that those darn wildfires that year just halted you where I am right now in Leavenworth. But yeah. like, um, but like, I was I'm curious about like what what is it? Is it is there like is there like the sense of like I got to crush miles every day when you're doing these longer through hikes, or is it more like a hike your own hike kind of thing? Hey, if I want to go, do I want it to be flat or do I want to like come to the end of the day and I'm at camp and I'm telling every other one everyone else on the trail, like this was my crazy story for the day. <laughs> this is both for sure. Um, you know, there's so many people that do it that there's going to be people that like their primary like reason for being out there is to chase that goal of hiking the PCT. And they're going to be more motivated to like crush miles. But then a lot of them still are going to be down to, to chill at the end of the day. And then there's a lot of people that are just kind of, you know, they're still, they're still crushing miles, but maybe not quite as hardcore as some other people. And they're taking them, more zeros and they're taking more time to do the trail. And um, this is, it's like this on both the AT and the PCT, by the way. Um, and so there's, there's a good mix of both, you know, there's some people that are more, some people that are further on one end of the spectrum. And there's some people that really kind of encompass it all. They'll be crushing miles so hard that they get lonely and then they want to talk to everyone, every opportunity they get. So, you know, it really, it really kind of depends. Um, and actually, speaking of through hikes, I'm sure you guys have been asked this before, but um, oh, yes. do you ever see, I guess, I don't know how it would look, you and Miranda doing a through hike or Miranda doing a through hike, anything like that for the channel? Yeah, probably not one of the longer ones like CDT, AT, PCT. And, and there's a number of reasons for that. One is it's like, uh, it's a lot of time, you know, and uh, I got a dog and he's 14. <laughs> And, uh, you know, like, I don't want to think about this now, but like in, in the most lightly way of putting it, like maybe when he's no longer in the world, that would be something we could consider. Rand has got, you know, her cat and it's like, it's tough to be away from these things for that long. Yeah. Um, and also it's like, you know, we kind of have so many different, um, Rand and I can get quite uh, uh, annoyed with like kind of doing a lot of the same stuff, you know, and it's like I uh, no, let me, let me take that back and phrase it a different way. I think that we're both a little bit scared of like what it would be like to spend that long doing one thing. You know, I, I think that and, I, and, and, and like let me say this. I have the utmost like admiration for what you've done with AT and the, and the, and the PCT through hike. I mean, these things are not easy and. The finishing, I mean, I, don't, I, 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 you know, if people don't, maybe don't even know how few people actually finish, you know, I look, I found that like out, I think last year I read this something like 14, 10%, 14%, something like that finished a lot of these longer through. And I'm just like, wow, you know? And so it's like it's such, you know, admiration for what you've done with your channel and like homemade wanderlust and even like, you know, hungry hiker, she lives out here in Washington and she's like, you know, and doing the PCT again and Taylor doing the AT seems like every year, you know, yeah. it's just like, man, <laughs> <laughs> you know, uh, but like, I, I think we definitely, well, okay, here's the scoop here. Here's the scoop. There is a hundred percent chance that Miranda and I will do a through hike together. Um, it probably will not be for some time, any of the triple crown ones. Yeah. But Hey, there's lots of shorter ones that are still like super, honestly, at this point, like, I mean, it, they've been covered 
a lot on previous episodes of the show. Um, I love the shorter trails, the trails that not as many people know about, the trails that not as many people hike. Totally. Um, so you guys should, yeah, you should definitely do, you know, I don't know if you could do like a hundred or two hundred mile trail. That's still long enough that you oh, have yeah. to do a lot of preparation to make sure the channel's still rolling while you're out there, which is I've I'm coming to to find out is not easy to keep it to keep the content coming because. You gotta you gotta pump out the content, dude. But like, yeah, you, know, I, I, you guys could make it work, I'm sure. And, and I think people would love to see it. I would love to see it. I think that like to even like tease it a little bit, like the way that we'd probably do it, which would be more like would be that we'd probably take a shorter trail, Colorado Trail, Arizona Trail, Penhody Trail, you know, maybe even the Long Trail, Vermont, or something even like around like the Wonderland Trail around or the JMT. Um, here I am just naming all of the shorter through hikes to show that I know them. Uh, <laughs> he's like trying to prove to everyone. He's like, no, dude, like fucking through hiking sick, dude. Like <laughs> uh, uh, the, uh, but like we would probably shoot it all out and then we would take the to totality of footage and we'd edit it into a either feature length video or multiple feature length videos that would drop after the trails over. Like we, there wouldn't be a, a daily vlog um, uh, like kind of the way like I, I so admire what Taylor's doing where she just I don't know how she does it honestly or oh, how you dude, did it even yeah. daily I'm I don't like, either how the heck I, do you I, I have no idea I even more so having through hiked I it makes me even more not know yeah how. yeah it's crazy it's oh crazy. and like the way you did with the piece I mean you're sending the footage back to your editor and like you probably what you're not seeing these videos before they go live on YouTube right you don't necessarily know mm -hmm. you might see it sometimes I oh, yeah. would sometimes there's a few times where I'd be like posted up on the side of like a cliff somewhere like you know my hand over my phone screen to block the sun so I could like try to watch the video before it goes live yeah but sometimes yeah I would just be like Luke just <laughs> It's it's in God's hands. <laughs> AKU, <laughs> yeah. just post it. That's and, that's. Uh, I mean, yeah. I don't know. That's easier though than the people who edit on trail, who I have raved about many times on this podcast about IB Tats. Another one I always talk about how the hell he does it. Um, it, while people that edit while they're through hiking, at least I had like yeah, it was a pain to send the footage out to Luke to edit them, but that's way easier than actually doing the edit itself while you're on trail, like. I don't know. Yeah, I don't know how people do that. And honestly, dude, I have no desire to do that. Like, yeah, that's a lot. If I, don't even know. if I couldn't have someone edit those for me, I would have just shot it all and then edited it afterwards for sure. Like, it would have just taken away from the experience too much, I think. And I think it would have just been a subpar product as well. Yeah, but that's just me. You know, yeah. some people clearly do it with great results. So for sure. I mean, like, I guess, like, what is it? I didn't even know what you, is that like on your phone? Are you filming on your phone, editing on the phone? Some or? people, like t Taylor, I think was the phone. Ibita has a, he does like an actual camera. He had a drone when he hiked the CDT. And yeah, dude, it's, it's nuts, but I don't know. Um, <laughs> yeah, dude, we're getting, we're getting towards the end here, but I still have, I still have like a bunch of questions, especially Instagram questions. So, um, so when I posted that poll on Instagram, I got a lot of questions. A, a number of a number of people said, "Is he single?" Which hmm. I got this multiple times, and I will say at least one of the people that asked this was obviously married because I went to her profile and like <laughs> the first photo was like her and her husband. So, so I don't know what's going on there, um, but um, <laughs> no, we we don't actually have to go into that. Um, however, Chelsea, one of your coworkers, yeah, Chelsea, ah. Uh yeah, who I got to meet actually at uh you at did. Trail she was super chill. Yeah. Um she asked me to ask you about the first time that you you used a bidet in the backcountry. Oh for God's sakes. <laughs> so this was uh we did a video, so one of my favorites that we've done, so one of my favorite trips ever, Canyon Lands. We went to the maze. A uh, quick little blurb about what the maze is. If you don't know, the maze is the most remote district of Canyonlands, one of the most remote areas, I think, of the lower 48 states, other than, I think, River of No Return Wilderness in Idaho. And it's, like, super hard to get to. So that's one of the reasons why it's, like, kind of this coveted place to go. 2,000 people go a year. Uh, you either have to drive, like, six, seven hours in an off-road you have to have like off-roading skills and the proper vehicle to drive on this road that's just like true off-roading to get there. Or the other way is what we did, which is you take a riverboat in from Moab, 
and they just kind of literally just chuck you on the side of this on the river in this area called Spanish Bottom, and then you're there, and you're just that's it, you're out there. And they and uh, anyway, it's notoriously difficult to navigate. Um, actually, we didn't mention this in the video, but it's where the Hole in the Wall gang, Butch Cassidy, sent in his kid. That's where they would hang out when they robbed stagecoaches, uh, because it was just impossible to find him in there. Uh, it's just literally a maze of canyons that like are sunk into the earth, and you know, they all look the same. So it's easy to get lost and you'll never find anybody in there if they don't want to be found. But um, anyway, that's the that's what the maze is. So that sets this up. Uh, we were at the last day of, of five days out there. So we did backpacking four nights. And this was, I think, like the last night and I'd run out of toilet paper. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't bring enough toilet paper. And uh, and like I was like, well, Moran, I got to use the bidet. You know, can I borrow it? This is as I remember it. Maybe I, I, or maybe I just wanted to use it. It doesn't actually matter. <laughs> the experience was the same. I wander away, and I'm like, I, I, I totally respect that Miranda loves this thing, and I totally respect that it's more leave no trace friendly. I don't get it, dude. I, I, I don't get it either. I'm with you, man. I'm with you. I'm like, I, I'm sorry, but like, I don't know how to angle it right. And and I'm not. I don't want to gross out any of your viewers, but I literally just cannot think that like, there's no way I'm clean. Dude, I'm, that's ex yeah. that's exactly how I feel. <laughs> yeah, me and me and uh, this guy I hiked with on the PCT, Brandon. We used to talk about this all the time. We were like, "How the hell do people use a bidet when they're hiking?" I just, yeah, I don't. Care. Yeah, I didn't like blasting nasty water in directions I don't want it blasted. You know, that's <laughs> <laughs> you know? brutal. Like I just, I, I was like, I came back and I was like, I'll never touch this thing ever again. <laughs> you know, unless I, unless I have no other choice, you know? <laughs> yeah, pretty tough, man. I guess we're already telling stories. So one of the things that we do at the end of these episodes, it is called Trail Tales after all. I always have my guests just share their, their go-to story from the trail. And um, I think we, we had a lot of back and forth about, you know, camera setups, which it's kind of ironic now, given we just ended up going with the webcam anyways, but that's all good. Um, and so you might have forgotten about this, but um, I think I warned you about the, having a story ready for the Yeah, end. I think I got... The typical one was choosing which one. Yeah. Because there's a few. Because a lot of my the exploits, they're on videos. You know, people can go watch... They can go watch did it. I, did I challenge you to come up with one that hasn't been on? You did. And I have a, okay. I have a couple. So... Okay, cool. I... I um, I'll tell you one that's local here to Washington that happened in the last few years. The sure. other one I was going to pick was from a trip when I was, you know, years and years ago, you know, when I was like 21 or something, 22. But, um, and uh, there's a, here, I'll set this up. So there is a hike here in Washington State, if you're not familiar, called the Enchantments, right? And it is up there with the JMT in terms of difficult permits to get. <clears throat> Lottery system, everyone tries to get it. And the appeal of it is, is it's like, it's called the Enchantments because it's like a fairy tale zone. I mean, you go up, you basically, you, crawl, you, you, you hike up this mountain pass called Asgard Pass, and then you're in this, like, incredibly gorgeous area of these little alpine lakes and tarns and, you know, there's mountain peaks around you, these kind of almost really jagged mountain peaks. You've got Dragon Tail, Prussic Peak. I mean, like, just, it's, you know, it's the kind of place that if you were there, it's, it's like it's not real you know, it, if you get it on the right day, which I didn't. <laughs> <laughs> and if you get it on the wrong day, boy, does it suck. Um, uh, actually, this is perfect because it was about two years ago to the day. And it was in late October. Late October in Washington State means a lot in this area of the state, Central Cascades, lots of snow or perfect weather or a bunch of rain. But it's like it's either it's gonna be like the best backpacking weather you've ever had in your life, or it's gonna be like close to the worst. Okay. And uh, you gotta just thread the needle, you know. And uh, I had the last. I got a I got a permit for the core zone, which is where you can like how the permits work is you can only camp where your permit is located, and the core zone is where everyone wants to be. And so I had this core zone permit, so I could camp in the core of the enchantments, and uh, there was gonna be a uh, uh, aurora borealis event that night. Right. And and so that is the only reason why I went, because the night before, two nights before, it could have been a week before we went. I went with my friend Miguel, who's a very close friend of mine. Um, and he was like, 
to asking me about the weather because the snow was coming in and it was like going to be on Halloween or October 30th. And he's like, looks like there's going to be snow. I don't know. And I'm like, yeah, it looks like it could be rough. Weather is not really working out. Might not be worth it, you know? And all of a sudden it's like, hold on a sec. Northern Lights. Let's go, you know? Nice. And uh, anyway, things go great. We hike past Kolchak Lake. And the kind of the kind of big we talked earlier about like going up, right? And uh, this is probably the, one of the toughest sections for backpacking in Washington. It's called Asgard Pass. I don't have the exact figure. Someone can probably correct me, but I think it's something around like two thousand feet of gain in a mile. Oh damn! Yeah, that's no joke, especially for out west. Like, oh yeah, I feel like that's that's pretty aggressive for yeah. Yeah, and I'm cocky, you know. I look, I'm at the bottom. I look up, and I think. People say it'll take you five, six hours to climb this thing. And I'm like, ah, I'll go up in an hour and a half, you know? <laughs> and because uh, Miguel and I, you know, like we hike a lot. We work out. We're in shape. We have that kind of arrogance. Um, and uh, what I didn't, you know, realize was that, first off, it's so tall that like there's like snow at the top. You can't really see how much snow it is. So we're just kind of going up and it's like a slog. And all of a sudden the snow is getting deeper. And I'm realizing that snow that looked like it was just kind of blanketing the ground a little bit gently, kind of nice. It's way steep, you know. Mm. And the only thing kind of more sketchy than going up Asgard Pass is going down Asgard Pass. Um, and this is a day where I should have had crampons and an ice axe and a helmet. And instead I had micro spikes and a trekking pole. <laughs> <laughs> and and I'd forgotten my gloves. Oh boy, this is how you end up in a in a Kyle Hitz hiking video right here. It, 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 I was gonna say like <laughs> you could have been making a video about me. You know, I'm glad I I'm glad I'm not. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, so we get it's just it's just a slog. I mean, it's miserable. I mean, it probably takes us seven hours to get to the top, and the top 100 feet, 200 feet are right there in front of Miguel and I. Frozen waterfall epic looking thing and the last bit is a snowshoe traverse and uh and then a boulder scramble uh hands and feet kind of scramble and um the thing about this shoot is it's like if you were to slip it's like gonna deliver you right into a big rock and you're gonna die so sketchiest 20 feet across in a thing you know i mean get across that and then it's like cool, we're good, we made it, we're like, we shouldn't be here. That's all we can talk about is we should not be here, you know? This is a get through it to get out of it kind of situation. I hope I'm setting this up enough because it's like, the scene was literally like, people are like, why wouldn't you turn around? Why wouldn't you turn around? It's like, because that would have been so much worse. Yeah. And, and uh, it wasn't like there was a storm over us. We weren't getting hit with anything. It was really cold, but it was just really icy and really snowy and we could have slipped and fall, fallen really easily. Anyway, so Miguel and I kind of like get separated because we both have a different relationship with kind of the heights and, you know, he's a bit behind me and I'm just trying to like, I just want to get through it. So I'm just trying to like literally eat this landscape. I, I would have like chewed my way to the top if I had to, because I'm just like so sick of being there. Um, and we come, come to this final cr climb and, um, and it's, and it's every single boulder is covered with this thick of ice. I mean, straight up ice. There's a, uh, uh, and so I'm having to like kick into it with micro spikes to create little ledges. Damn. And these micro spikes are not meant for this, you know. So they're I've ripped I'm ripping them. The, the chains are shredding, and I'm just like slowly but surely trying to like with a with a trekking pole and micro spikes get to the top of this thing. And this is kind of where the story comes to a point. I know I'm a bit long winded with this, but You're like good, man. I get to the top, and I'm like. My heart's pounding. I'm freezing cold. I've got no gloves on because I forgot them. I've just climbed up this like ice face where every wrong move, I'm going to go falling down. I'm going to hit the snowshoe and I'm going to careen down and I'm going to die. It's like 10 degrees. I just want to like go home. And we're at the top of now Asgard Pass, 8,000 feet elevation. And I see something that makes no sense in the world, which is a guy in a t-shirt, um, bounding up Asgard Pass. To this day, Miguel and I call this man the spirit of the mountains because we don't know if he was real. It's like, I don't know, I don't know if any Shakespeare fans are listening, but like Ariel from the Tempest, like this thin young man, just like in a t-shirt, like, like as if, like, like la di da -di day up Asgard, right? And 
he's comes closer and closer and closer and 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 then just like comes up and like gives us a warm hello. <laughs> <laughs> great day to be out you know yeah. and like and uh and and is on his way and and i was it, it's like to put this in perspective the only people out that day were people who were practicing to climb mountains so they had like full-on mountaineering gear and me and miguel who were backpacking and another two guys who were also stupid enough to do it that day <laughs> and and that was it, you know? And then here, and all of us are at the top. I just remember seeing these other two guys and they're like pale and shell-shocked realizing like, boy, we just spent five hours, one wrong step ends your life, you know? And that's a lot of stress to like live with for that long. Yeah. And we're all just kind of shaken and we're at the top and freezing, but like grateful to be alive. And then here comes like on a cloud, this like, as if it's nothing, as if our whole experience, <laughs> he doesn't even have a backpack. Damn. And, and then disappears. And I don't know if it was a hallucination. Uh, I don't know what happened to that guy. Uh, but I think about him probably like a few times a year. Just like, yeah, I want to get him on the pod. Yeah. <laughs> that's, like, that's incredible. Unaffected. Like, like Kal-El, something like that. Like the Earth's, <laughs> Earth's forces do not affect this person. <laughs> <laughs> incredible, dude. Yeah. Incredible. Well, I hope he was okay, and I'm glad that you guys were okay too. That's definitely uh, that's definitely pretty sketchy. There's a lot of doubts I have in life about a lot of things. I have no doubt that that guy's thriving right now. Yeah. Wherever he it is, it sounds like yeah, who he am made I it least? out. That was child's play. Probably comes from some like north, like some like probably from like near the Wind River in Wyoming or something. You know, <laughs> negative forties yeah. is comfort zone. You know. So, um, did you say you had another one, dude? Are we doing double stories? Are you want me to do another one? I got another one for you. Okay. Here's one. This one's got a little bit more dramatics, actually. So this one is the one you want to go with. If you do edit this out. No, we're going to do both of them, man. All right, sweet. I don't envy you editing this, by the way. For everyone knowing, I know how long-winded <laughs> I am, and I know how much I talk like freaking ping pong, freaking going back. No, and... it's all good, man. It's all um, good. <laughs> thank you. I'm also, like, easily distracted by things. So, like, I see my own image here, and I'm like, oh, is that me? <laughs> um, but, like, the... Uh... So this is years ago. I was doing a hike in southern china called tiger leaping gorge and um this is like a through hike it takes a few days and um so it's not like a big one it's like a week and um like i described before it's not like you're taking a tent or you just have to have snacks and stuff mm -hmm. and it's not really wilderness you know it's like natural and it's a hike but like you're never if you wanted to go to a road it wouldn't take you that long to get to one in short pretty short order Okay. Um, and, the, and people like live out there, you know, like it's like people live out there full time. Um, but it's a beautiful hike along a really, really deep river gorge, uh, above the Yangtze river. I think it's the Yangtze river. I, I can't remember exactly which river it is, but it's deeper. It's about, it's depth wise, similar to the Grand Canyon. Okay. And, uh, you're kind of hiking along beautiful views, panoramic views everywhere you look. Um, a lot of people, when they think of China, they don't really think of like they think more like Tibet and like kind of the Tibetan plateau. This is kind of near there, but this would be in scenery wise, a lot more similar to like, um, something like here, like in like, uh, Northern California. Okay, cool. And, uh, anyway, I met up with these couple of guys from Britain, uh, Israeli couple and a German couple. And we were going to like do this together. And a lot of it's really sketchy. You're hiking along the edge of a cliff. And if you fall off that cliff, I couldn't tell you how long it was down, but it would be at least 600 feet that you'd fall. I mean, and I'm like straight down to the river. So uh, death, for sure. Sure death. I mean, and you know, in a way that would be like, look, <laughs> you wouldn't feel anything. You just fall for a minute and then that's it, you know? But like, <laughs> long way down, really scary. And, and honestly, so far down that it's almost like any vertical goes away because it doesn't make sense. Like your eyes are like, how far down is that? But um, we're... Um, we're hiking along, and I'm and I've been tra at this point traveling for uh, almost a year, so I'm like in really good walking shape. I've been carrying my backpack on my back. Actually, this will be really interesting to people. If you want to talk about the opposite of ultralight, that was me. <laughs> I mean, I I didn't I didn't have hiking gear with me. I had luggage with me. <laughs> <laughs> you know, like I had a I had a sixty five liter 
backpack I got from an Australian army surplus store in a brand that I could not name now and do not remember <laughs> that, that had an internal frame that the person who put it on me in the army surplus store took these aluminum rods out of it, held them up to the shape of my back and like bent them a bit to kind of like shape my back and then slid them back into these little sleeves. And that was like the support structure. Damn. And I haven't seen anything like that since. I'm sure that someone would be like, yeah, that's how it's done in a lot of places. But I, um, anyway, it was like like that. And I'm carrying, you know, not, uh, changes of clothes for all sorts of situations. I might have to go to like a nice dinner, you know. So I've got like a nice shirt and nice pants. I've got everything that I've been traveling with for a year in mostly cities on my back. And I'm hiking, you know, all day. So it's like I was pretty strong. I could carry that pack anywhere. And um, I'll get to the point here. So like, anyway, I'm, 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 I'm hiking way ahead because I've been traveling a while and I've, I'm a bit better of hiking and walking shape than some of the people I'm with who are like kind of new to traveling. And I get ahead by maybe a half mile. And I realize I should, we're, we're hiking and the, and the hike along is along this steep, steep cliff face. There's a section where there's a waterfall comes and splashes out over the trail and then just into the abyss. And I'm like, oh, this is sketchy. So I like kind of little water crossing, don't fall, because then you're going over. Um, and I hike about another half mile, and I think I should wait, because we're hiking together, and we know we're gonna get separated, you know, something can happen, we're here in this country that where none of us are from. And I wait like way longer than I should wait. You know, and all of a sudden I see running up the trail, one of my friends from England, and he's like <sighs> huffing and puffing, out of breath, you know, and he's like, the Israeli girl, she fell. Oh boy. And I'm like, oh my God, like she's dead. She's, she's gone, that's it. And, um, and he's like, come back, we have to help her. And I'm like, help her? Like, what are you talking about, man? Like, well, yeah, we'll go back, but like, this is, I'm like, I didn't, this is, oh my goodness. Like, I don't know what to think, you know? He could have chosen his words better. I was going to give a spoiler alert here because I, I don't, <laughs> I'm laughing, but like, I'm, I'm laughing because it's like, those were not the words he should have used because okay. that's what's going through my head, right? Come running back. And she didn't fall off the cliff, but she did fall on her face on a rock and hit her jaw like right here. Ooh. And just shattered it. Oh, man. And um, Damn. I, just got, I get like chills over my whole body thinking about that. It's like, oh, my gosh, the pain she must have been in. And um, she's passing in and out of consciousness. The pain's so bad. Ooh. And uh, we are probably six miles, seven miles from the nearest town. And... Gosh, I want to say probably a 30 hour from there traveling to the nearest hospital. Jeez. And um, so German guy is like, well, we got to carry her out of here. And there's no Garmin in reach to hit the SOS. There's no, there's nothing you can do. You got to hike her out or else that's it. She's staying there all day. Yeah. And, uh, and all night. And like, so her boyfriend is like, understandably like distraught. And German guy puts her on his back. And then me and this other guy, we kind of put our arm, our arms underneath one of her legs and to kind of take the weight off. And we hiked like that. Yeah, all the way. I can't remember the mileage because it was 15 almost years ago. But like it was, you know, close to eight miles we hiked back. Damn, dude. And with her on this guy's back. And it's like when I think about people with for like heroic efforts, like that German guy whose name I wish I could remember, this is like is like a hero, you know. I mean, he carried yeah. her on his back for that long, and she's like, you know, holding her jaw in place, you know, like this, uh, and kind of in and out of consciousness the whole time. Damn. And um, puts uh, we get to the town, and people come running out because they can tell something's up, and you know people of this town kind of makes me a little bit like teary thinking about just how nice people are all over the world, you know, and how like incredible places you go. We have like 
a news cycle and things like that that kind of make places look a certain way. But that's usually not how people tend to be in those, you know, and like you can think the world's a scary place filled with lots of bad things, but it really isn't. It's filled with like kind, good people who will go out of their way to help other people. You know, and if it and like that was what this was like. I mean, a town comes to carry this woman to a place, puts her in the back of a sorry, the town comes together to carry this woman to a car, land cruiser, you know, drive some miles very far on backcountry roads to get to another town to take her to another car that could take her to another town where they have an airfield where she can be flown. I mean, like the effort that that would have taken, but that was probably something that I probably didn't tell as well as I could have because it was so long ago, but those are like kind of the two most dramatic. So she ended up being okay. I believe so. I never heard from her again because you know, these are, you know, you're, these are, as you probably know from hiking the PCT, you like meet people. And you, take, yeah. you meet people and then they become yeah, yeah, into your life and they leave your life and, you yeah. know, but you remember them forever. And, uh, like that was kind of one of those instances. So I, I you know, I'm sure she was all right, but like, dude, incredible, man. Yeah. Like I think about the kind of things that can happen when you're out and like, that is just kind of one wrong foot away kind of all the time. Yeah. And, uh, the, uh, that's. Yeah, so that is like on my mind a lot whenever we are out on a shoot, you know? <laughs> you know, like anytime we do this, it's like thank goodness for these satellite communicators now because it changes everything and, you know, emergency services. But like, we're, yeah, yeah that can happen. Incredible. Dude, thank you for uh, sharing those. Thank you for coming on. This is your first podcast ever, right? Yeah, we did all right. I, you know, it's like crazy to talk this way. But, uh, yeah. Awesome, man. Thank you so much. Um, if anybody watching or listening hasn't checked out Miranda's channel, I will have a link to that in the show notes and in the description. You got to go check it out. And to to close this out, first of all, let me say thank you very much, Rainer. Hell yeah, man. Thank um, you. And yeah, to close this out, there's a question that all your... I'm going to just go out. I'm just going to say it. all your fans want to know. And that is, are you and Miranda dating? And so without further ado, uh, go ahead. Why don't you answer that question? You know what? On your show, Kyle, only will I answer this question. Um, here's the scoop.